everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 60 minute session. I'm really excited to see what I can do to help some stomach ailments here. I want to thank the client very much for booking this session. This is for your dad, so I really appreciate the opportunity to help him. If any of you guys are interested in working with me, I offer distance energy healing and psychic wisdom um, to help you with any situation, um, whether that's information insight or some healing to help you feel brighter, better, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, I'd love to help. You can book a, a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, I'm going to read the goals here. I'm going to get started. So um, you say, this session is for my dad. He is having a hard time. His stomach hurts daily. So let's do the session on this, please, Miss Abby, featuring his angel. Okay. All right, so stomach pain. And we're going to work with angelic energy, which is, I am so excited to do this. I've been... I've been focusing on angels as my theme for um, October and on Patreon. So if you're interested in checking out Patreon, go to patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. And I'm having a lot of fun working with the angels and I'm really excited to get to know your dad's angel and see what we can do to work together to help with the stomach ailments. All right, here we go. We'll relax now. Okay. Okay, instantaneously, I see your dad. Um, so I'm going to start talking to your dad now. So I see you, and um, I take my hand, and it's full of light. And I place a light. I just immediately press it into where your stomach is, okay? I just press it right in there, and there's light in my hand. So that's what I'm experiencing. Let me just see what comes next, okay? All right, and then I follow myself into my own hand, and then I am now inside your stomach. What's interesting is the presence of an angel um, right now is, is part of me, but I also feel like it's part of the, the fabric of everything. So I'm, I'm going to continue to go as I'm guided, but I really want to bring the angel, like, and that identity. I want to bring it through the woodwork here so we can get more, more of a feel for the personality and, um, and messages for you. So right now, I'm guided to be in the stomach There's neutrality. I'm working on creating sensations and emotions. This is what the scene looks like. Basically, it's... Um, I would expect that it would feel painful, but I can see it. I can't actually feel it. And there's these like mucusy drips in here. Um, there's a little bit of um, like worn out kind of damage around the edges, like on the inside. And it just, it looks murky, to be honest. There's also an invisible energy built up in here. I don't, um, this is not good energy at all. There's, okay, this is complex. I'm going to have to study it for a bit. So the reason why I say that this energy here, centralized in the stomach, actually is expanded around your body. But then it represents just being present here, and it feels stubborn. It feels, um, it feels like a blanket, like it could be fresh as air, but it's not. It isn't healthy air, okay? It's, um, let's say you had a carbon monoxide event going on in your house, and that's, that's healthy air, right? No, it is not. It feels like we're breathing air. No, we are not. We're breathing carbon monoxide. So there's something like this, uh, the, the air is tainted, okay? <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how in the world I'm going to remove this. 
All right, let's see if we can get some feedback from your angel. I see an image of a man who is very tired sitting in a rocking chair and the body is really, really tired. And I see that there's a nice house overlooking what is like a farm field. It feels like I'm out in the country. I see the paint is chipped on this rocking chair. The paint is chipped on the front porch. And I experience the sound of the angel wanting to revive your, your zest, okay? Your gusto. And I see a bucket of fresh paint and wanting to repaint the rocking chair and repaint the front porch. And this is sort of symbolic and paralleling wanting to freshen up um, the way that you feel on the inside that you're not chipping away here. And anything that is chipping away, we want to give it a fresh cone of paint. We, we want to freshen things up. But it's hard because there's just so much exhaustion. And it, it's hard to even enjoy rocking in the chair. It's hard to even enjoy being on the porch. It's hard to enjoy the, the beautiful country, um, looking at the farm and the, the corn growing. It's, it's like a, a beautiful day and seeing just the outdoors, you know, from your front porch, relaxing on the rocking chair. It's just, it's really hard to enjoy this though. It's very hard. All right, this angel also, there's something complex in the way that they think. There's something calculated, logical. Almost like we could solve you like a math equation. But there's a lot of uh, emotion in the midst of the practical. So practical is straightforward. It's black and white. This is how it's done. It's the one and only equation. This is how you solve for it. Um, it's kind of uh, very straightforward. No emotions here. It is what it is. But then when the emotions get involved, they're kind of dragging, they're um, slowing us down, they're heavy, um, they're dense, makes it harder to breathe. It feels like this dragging, um, dense emotional energy, it's not necessarily crying. It just feels emotionally depleted. It feels just depleted, depleted, completely depleted. And then this is mixing in with what should feel like a breeze. It should feel um, easy. It should feel black and white. Um, turn the page. Bam. This is the story. Like, it is what it is. Matter of fact, it, it takes something from dense into lighter, okay? But um, it's complicated because in order to help this stream of the dense and dragging, um, slowing us down energy, um, we've got to somehow solve for both. We've got to do this together. I am starting to find myself back in the stomach. And the strange, it's like pollution in the current of your fresh air inside yourself. No wonder we're on a, a nice outdoor porch, you know, because it, it represents the country air, fresh air. And even the fresh air is not helping. Can't even enjoy the fresh air. Why is this... Like, I should be in the midst of pain. And I'm surprised that it's um, not allowing me to access the pain yet. It's just allowing me to access this conversation. That's it for right now. Okay, we have polluted air moving all around you, within you, all around you. It's depleting you. It's exhausting you. Okay, who, who, okay, 
I'm back to in front of you and I take my hand and I, I stick it right there into the stomach. It, it's very odd when this happens, like, oh, <laughs> all of a sudden, whoak, whoak, like that. <laughs> okay, so that just happened again. But what's different this time is it feels like there's the representation of who is doing this now is not very nice. I, I feel like this is this... Um, you can just, I mean, I feel like I'm a person. I feel like uh, when I press my hand now into your stomach, I'm not doing it with love or compassion. I'm doing it out of like spite for you. Um, I feel like this, this, there's aggression, there's anger, there's um, anger towards you. Um, this is what it feels like right now. Okay, okay, so I'm looking at the situation and I'm taking the hand and I'm moving it backward so that I can create separation between you and what this represents, okay? Because something aggressive is being pressed into your stomach, okay? And it, it doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about you. But you're going to have to receive this whether you like it or not. It's a bully, it's absolutely a bully and it is polluting your energy field with its bully energy. And then it's depleting you and you can't even enjoy the country fresh air. So we've got this problem. All right, I, I'm gonna have to, f okay. All right, I'm gonna ask your angel what the calculated and concise. <laughs> All right, what's your logic say? <laughs> okay. Maybe we could see your angel as like Spock, you know? We're gonna work with logic here. <laughs> I think that could be fun. All right, I'm listening. The angel says, um, it's like this. There are times in life where you will have to stand before um, an aggressor. There are times in life where you will have to stand before an aggressor. And it takes courage to continue to stand. And when you want it to stop and you can't make it stop, you will have to again find courage, right? So the man that sits on the rocking chair with the paint chipping away now at the porch and the chair, um, you could say the, the chipping away of your um, um, longevity or vitality or gusto, right? Um, takes courage to be that person. It takes a lot of courage to be that person. It takes a lot of courage to be you, okay? It takes a lot of courage to be you. And what's interesting is when you, when you acknowledge how courageous you are, it gives you a new sense of pride in yourself, and you actually stand a little stronger on your two feet. And you tell this, it's defined as like an aggressor, aggressive person, an aggressive energy. Um, you stand before it and you aren't resisting it anymore. You stand before it and you say, you can do all you want, but I can still stand here with all the courage in my being. And I, I, it's like I can stand before this and, I, and it will not cripple me. It will not crumble me. You're going to stand strong, okay? Because right now it, it's almost like it is going to cripple or crumble you. Because it's just a bit too aggressive, okay? It's really aggressive. It's rude, at least so. <sighs> Hold on here. <sighs> right now, there's just a release, okay? This actually is more emotional to me. This is more felt. This is coming from you. This is frustration. This is, um, this is screaming. I mean, this is screaming frustration here, okay? <sighs> so I'm just like letting this kind of happen and I feel it all over my body and I'm just like, like, Aah! you ever have one of those moments where life just sucks and you like grab the steering wheel of your car while you're driving around town. And you're like, ah! 
<laughs> well, you're gonna drive just fine, but you're like screaming in your car because it's the one place you can just let things out where your neighbors don't hear you. I feel like that's happening. I feel like there's a, like we're having an insane and an insane moment that that is getting insane, and we are screaming, and we are just like we are in control of the car, but we are screaming. And this is the only place I have to go to just scream. Ugh, this is aggression. So here the aggressor is placing its aggression into you. You're suffering from it. And then naturally, because things are out of your control, you're now venting out the aggression. So here we are. We're doing this, okay? No wonder this is impacting your... Um, this is like impacting your emotional gut. It's impacting your stomach, right? Uh, so we got emotion now. Thank you. I see... Um, it's okay for this to feel like a breakdown of yourself, by the way, because I see complex, um, here's a cube, cube becomes littler cube, littler, littler, and it's happening so fast. It's like one big cube is suddenly become one, one smaller cube, but then it's like really, really like chain reaction. Like a million cubes are just like, like, holy crap, this thing is birthing out millions of cubes. Whoa, what's happening here? And they're like smaller and smaller and smaller. It's like, ah, there's so many cubes, you know? All right. So I'm watching this and I'm like, what is this? What is this about? <laughs> okay. What's your angel have to say? Now this is important. <sighs> this is really important. I still don't, I don't understand its meaning yet. And I don't know what your angel is saying just yet because I'm listening but part of me understanding what your angel is saying is for me to continue to look at the event. The event of the big cube and all, it's so, it's, it was slow, but then I can't believe how fast it's picking up and it's going so fast. And there's, um, it's like the big cube is still there, but it's, it's um, birthing out smaller and smaller versions of itself. And now we have like piles and piles of like cubes being like continually born. This, this is... Um, hard by the way this represents not like exciting birth of new cubes it's more like um the big cube it, all of itself is being um pulled into smaller and smaller versions of itself many times over and it's very very exhausting it's like it takes so much for this cube to become so many cubes like it's so exhausting <sighs> Nothing can be done about this. Nothing can be done to repair the original cube. Nothing can be done to move the smaller cubes back to the original cube. Nothing can be done to merge all the cubes together. Nothing can be done like, um, we can't go back to the way things once were. We have to continue to let things um, be born anew, even if it's picking up so quickly. It feels like a breakdown also of yourself, okay? Breakdown of yourself. And you're not gonna be able to keep up with it. It's gonna, it's gonna be hard to keep up with. It's okay if it is, by the way. It's okay if it is. Okay, there's something else I am meant to do here. <sighs> I have to be quiet for a moment and still. We're not going to worry about the breakdown as though it is a loss. We're actually going to see this breakdown as a gain. Okay. So in any way, shape or form that you feel as though you are being broken down, you're actually gaining so much more than you know. So you need to see this as you are gaining so much from this experience right now, okay? And again, the aggressor, this is how we neutralize that situation because the aggressor is like um, aggressively um, pressing itself into your stomach, but you're in control here, not the aggressor. The, you're in control here. 
and you're not being broken down by this experience you're actually gaining so much from this experience and it takes courage because it is hard right because it is hard it takes courage and so again you're getting stronger in your identity and your relationship with yourself so there's only wins going on here there's only winning going on here okay even if that means that you can't enjoy the the country fresh air yet you're actually still winning you are still winning okay okay <laughs> okay <laughs> back in the car ah <laughs> i was like Ugh! so mm, venting out <sighs> It feels to me like it's venting out all over your body. Like even your hair is venting. Like your toes are venting. Like everything is just venting out everywhere. Are we venting out with all honesty the pollution? Are we venting it, the pollution out? Like, because you don't... I, do you need the pollution? I mean, I have a feeling we need fresh air. That's why we got the country fresh air. Like let's... Let's work with the country fresh air, shall we? This venting is important. It's good. It's healthy. So I'm kind of listening in. And where's that pollution at? Like, what's that sound like now? Is this um, as we kind of release these emotional events? Uh, maybe it's uh, diminishing the pollution. I'm not sure. So let's see. Okay, I'm being um, brought right back into the stomach. Okay, it's not as drippy in here. It's not as tore up in here. And I become energy that uh, neutralizes. Like, I'm, I'm going into the whole thing. Like, I'm becoming your very stomach, okay? And the neutral is really just to <sighs> calm. That's all it is. It's, it, you could take something that is acidic or burning or um, highly uncomfortable, right? That, that, that we're going to calm that down. So um, cool it down, calm it down, relax it down. This is not easy, by the way. As I relax this down, it's almost like... Um, if your stomach isn't tight and clenched, then it is unsafe. Um, it's only safe when it is tight and clenched. <laughs> You ever have something really painful happen and your whole body is just like clenched? All right, here, here we go. Um, a woman's situation. When you're giving birth, they tell you not to clench your body and to breathe through the experience, right? This whole thing is ridiculously painful and you, you cannot clench. You got to just stay relaxed and loose and limber and breathe, okay? That's how you do it. So if you clench your body up, you, you're, you're holding yourself back from breathing. What you need to do is you need to embrace breathing and relaxation because that oxygen is going to get on in there and it's going to empower your, your balance. It's going to empower this, this relaxation thing is, not, um, is more powerful than being clenched. And your stomach is saying, no, being clenched up and uh, like this, I'm uncomfortable, uh, I'm uncomfortable, I don't like this at all. Like <laughs> every mother having a baby, ah, make it stop, it's not going to stop. Like, ah, like, no, it's like, <sighs> breathe, just breathe, okay? So we need to realize that breathing and being in control, breathing, being in control, relaxing is actually empowerment, okay? It's going to empower you big time. <sighs> You don't trust me at all. <laughs> You're like, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Relax, 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 relax. I'm like, yeah, you can relax. You can relax. Yeah, it's happy, happy. <laughs> so we're going to try to bring in the joy and the relaxation and, and the happiness, comfort. You're crying because it just isn't going to stop. I say thank you for saying that. The reason you're able to say that is because you're relaxing. And it's even more painful now when you relax because you're allowing yourself to feel it, which actually is going to empower your situation. Because trying to be tight and clenched and, and shallow breathe and ignore is going to uh, actually make this more difficult. 
Believe it or not, it will. Nobody said this was going to be easy because I, I see again, it takes courage to stand up to this aggressor here. It takes courage. It takes courage to go through this. Because I, I see as you relax, it takes courage to relax. It takes courage to try this. But I see you getting control. I see you becoming powerful. I see you um, standing up against a threat. Okay. This threat is a, oh my God, is this, this thing is really manipulative, by the way. Continue to relax your stomach, continue to just relax and comfortably breathe and feel safe. Even if this is difficult, you do the best that you can, okay? I'm starting to see there's so many angels with you. And as you relax and as you focus on breathing, you're letting the angelic help in. Oh my God. You are not alone. You're carrying so much burden all by yourself. That is too difficult. You are not alone, okay? Let the angels help you. Like, let yourself lean into their support. They're angels because they're awesome, they're loving, they're kind. They can help you. It's just the right kind of energy for what you, what you need to get through this. Because when you open up to realizing that it's not you and you alone carrying this burden, but the angels can lighten the burden because they want to. And you let the help in. You let the angels in, you visualize that there are angels in your stomach and they're having like a, a wonderful little dance party, but it's like a therapy. It's like a, they're, they're nurturing, they're massaging, they're kissing, they're hugging, they're singing songs. <laughs> they're doing the, I don't know, like two step or something. <laughs> I see there's like line dancing, there's tap dancing. <laughs> I'm not sure why they're dancing, but there's a, just lightheartedness and, and kindness and, and fun and and um, it's just like an inner child as well. It's, it kind of makes me laugh and feel like a kid. It feel like I'm at my birthday party or something and I'm a kid. And it's like, yay, it's so fun in here. And so we're letting all that happy energy in. Oh, gosh, you're doing so good at relaxing. I'm impressed. Like uh, that um, horrible pain is starting to simmer down, okay? But there's more work to do. There is more work to do. Whew. I'm glad we're working with time here because 60 minutes is going to give me so much to work with, okay? <sighs> Continue to relax the stomach energies. Relax the stomach. Does not, it's, there's still resistance, but we're making so much good progress. There's some kind of pus, um, white like pus, that's kind of building up in here. They say that that's okay. It's, it's almost like a release. It's like when you open a can of pop and it goes and all the bubbles go crazy, you know what I mean? It's just like something that happens when the angels have a little dance party in your side. <laughs> It's not like crazy, okay? It's actually like really kid-like. It's really cute and it's adorable and it's loving and it's um, playful and full of happy energy. So relaxing, relaxing down. Yeah, these white bubbles are is it's like it makes me think of like peroxide on a wound, you know? It's it's just part of what happens, you know? Is that that's infection. That white stuff then is the infection coming out. Isn't that what they say if it bubbles then it's got that's because there was an infection, it's cleaning it. It's like they're cleaning your stomach. You know, peroxide is also about oxygen. And there's something about using oxygenated energy because the country fresh air, the polluted air, right? Um, 
the peroxide. Like, there's something here about the fact that we're running into this. This is like a theme of some kind, the oxygen. Relaxing your breathing, you know, labor and you're having to breathe and then just, you know, continue to breathe and don't clench up. So oxygen, again, is super important part of this healing process. <sighs> Okay, because I'm kind of like, oh, oof, I feel I feel kind of strange. Something strange happening here. Oof, so, so we're just letting the energy just ha ah, calm down. Okay, we're letting the energy just calm down. You really are relaxing a lot all of a sudden. Like you're really giving in here. It's really good. How are you doing that? Like you've come so far in such a short period of time. Like you're actually giving this a try. You're relaxing. It's it's working. It's it's helping big time. All right, let me go look at this pollution. Let me go take a look at this. This is something that I've been wanting to understand it a bit more. Okay, there's so much avoidance in me looking at it. Why is that? It doesn't want to be looked at. No, I'm going to look at you. It just, every time I look at it, it makes it so I'm looking at the wall or I'm looking somewhere else. I'm not actually looking at it. I say, you can be whatever you want to be, but I am looking at you. Yes, I am eyeballing you, pollution. So you can echo anything back. Oh, no, you're looking at the wall. No, you're looking somewhere else. You're not looking at me. No, I'm looking at you. Something aggressive is now happening. And, it, and it's, I'm representing an aggress, aggressive energy towards the pollution, which represents an aggressive energy. <laughs> so I'm like, um, I take the pollution by the neck is what it's like. But it looks like a big, um, it's like gray. It's like gray in a clear sky, but um, I'm taking it and I, I'm winding it up like it's a rope and I'm taking the rope by the neck. It's, but it, it's very like uh, direct. It's very, um, I've got you, you know? I feel like a cowboy and I have the rope and I got the cow and I wrestle, wrestling it on down, you know? <laughs> or gotcha. <laughs> And it's kind of like, wow, I guess I got it. Because <laughs> I'm like really aggressive here. I got you. And I look it in the eye. And I, I'm serious. It's like grasping all of evil in the palm of your hand and telling evil who's boss. And you got no power over me. You've got no power over me. And I see you for who and what you are. And you have no power over me. All you are is a tool. You're teaching me so much, but you you do not have me. I am cor courageous. I am strong. Thank you for what you're teaching me, but I have you. I have you. You're in my grip. I'm not in your grip. You're in my grip. When I do this, you, there is... Oh, this is opening up a lot of cans of worms, okay? Because I, I, I'm, I'm witnessing, I don't know, like cubes again, but they're like boxes that are opening up and I'm seeing into, seeing into, seeing into, seeing into, seeing into, still like so much information. And I don't know what it all means yet, but that's what I'm being shown here. Oh man, I, okay, it's okay to follow through with this. We're just gonna be honest, okay? So the next sensation that overcomes me is hate, okay? So I, I'm full of hate as I have this like pollution rope um, by the neck and I'm strangling all of evil and I've got you in the palm of my hand, okay? So then the next sensation is hate and we're not going to judge it. We're just going to be honest with the next sensation, okay? Because this is part of the venting and the healing process for your stomach. Okay, hold on. Okay. This is again back in the car. Like, oh man, this is getting really loud. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
This is a lot of rumbling, okay? A lot of anger, a lot of um, frustration, a lot of expressing out, okay? It's like the screaming in the car scenario. It's like the sane yet insane event of the screaming. Um, it's out of my control, but I can be in control this moment as I'm screaming. Like, um, this is the loudest it's gotten so far. I feel like I'm an earthquake, like the biggest earthquake of all time. The big one. I feel like I'm like, I am the earthquake, <laughs> ah! uh, but it's like really aggressive. Okay. I'm really pissed off and I'm shaking this evil pollution. Ah! I hate you. <laughs> but I'm doing it. Okay. So we're getting this out of the system. All right, so we're going to we're going to keep going because these are rivers of of emotion coming out here. Okay, uh ugh. still happening, but um there's a new idea uh developing here. <sighs> You go into another time room. You know how I said all those boxes open up? A bunch of ideas happen. I don't know what it all means. Um, but that's also kind of triggering the release of a lot of sound, a lot of um, reaction and response, a lot of hurt, upset, um, anger, a lot of that, okay? Makes sense why you're having a stomach issues with all that kind of going on inside. It's an emotional thing. So emotions are being digested in the stomach, just like food. Like, it's so interesting, the parallels between comfort food. Well, why would we call it comfort? Because we digest food in a way that makes us feel good, right? And it's all about feelings and food and stuff like that. So we're digesting information that is creating pain. And if the pain isn't being vented out and expressed, um, that becomes part of the food that gets lodged there, okay? Yeah, we're in another dimension and you are... Um, I want to, I guess the words are picking a fight with this, um, cord. It's not necessarily a rope. It's a silver cord. And it's odd because it, it has a face on what is like a, a rope. Um, it, it has rope arms and legs now, and it has like, it's like whole body is a rope and then it has like legs. So it has kind of like a tail and then the top is like its head. And you're, you're sitting across from one another. You're having a conversation with a silver cord, which is the pollution, which is the evil thing, you know, part of the aggressor, part of your defeat, part of your adversary, part of what creates the courage to be who you are. Hmm. It's almost like you're you're finding an even balance with one another. Because I don't see I see that this is becoming more like the vibration of equality, like you choose to respect it. And when you choose to respect it, it's not pollution anymore. It just is what it is. And when it is what it is, it's not defeating you because it never was a tool for defeat. It was just simply a tool. Like it is what it is. And you're learning so much here. And so you could almost say that the equality is shifting into another level, which is gratitude. And the complexity of all of this is starting to recite, um, recede because gratitude means that there isn't anything complicated about it at all. It's just we're learning what we need to learn and we're grateful for the learning. And yeah, sometimes it gets hard and clenchy and, and then we have to learn how to relax again and breathe through the experience and come to even terms with this. I would not ever see this as aggressive, this energy as aggressive because then it will create a reflection in the mirror of you and that you are aggressive. And if you can find the gentleness of who you are and be strong and confident in the courage of what it takes to get through this experience is not um, said to be easy. 
it's like you will find yourself almost like transforming from within and reaching um, the next level of the next thing, basically. It just, it just feels like um, I see there's a butterfly, but it's like the caterpillar becomes the butterfly, the butterfly becomes the caterpillar. I, I just see that, like it's a s circle of life. Caterpillar becomes the butterfly, butterfly becomes the caterpillar again. I, I just see like the circle of life. And it's kind of like um, in life, we go through difficult um, life experiences and we go from the caterpillar that is um, I guess feeding on the enrichment of the life experience and life experience starts to not taste good. Well, we're going through this process of, you know, discovering the cocoon now and becoming now the butterfly resurrected from that um, previous state of being. So, but then I see the butterfly will once again have to return to the experience of the caterpillar and um, grazing on new life experiences and those can create challenges and then finding the cocoon and the transformation. So I see that um, it's like the circle of life within a life, you know? And there's so much harmony and equality going on here now that was not here before for you. I mean, it's almost, a it surprises me. I mean, this is the, ne <laughs> the next level of surprise. Like, boy, we are really accomplishing a lot today. Like, you're figuring out how to relax. You're, you're now um, coming to a place of equality with this. Like, oh my gosh, like, incredible. Okay, so Angel, what is it that um, you would like to share next in this process? Okay, so we've taken the steps, you know, from what we've seen and experienced, we're going to, it's almost like see your stomach in a new way, as though, let's say your stomach could be a creative story, okay? And we're going to kind of um, visit with the creative story of your stomach and just see what it's like. And then we're going to work through that creative story in order to repair and heal it, okay? <sighs> Hmm. Everything kind of goes blank. Nothing, there's no real explanation of anything, but I, I'm appearing in a space. It's just kind of revealing itself to me, but I, I don't know what it's revealing. <laughs> I don't know anything. I, I feel like I am just waking up in today's day one in my life. I don't even know who or what I am or where. Or even the concept of what, what, how do you even think like that? You have such a fresh mind, such a fresh um, start. It's like the most new day that anybody could ever imagine having. And I feel like I'm inside of a plum. Like literally inside of a plum. And I'm falling asleep. And I feel cozy. I feel very, very peaceful. And I'm still sleeping, I'm still resting. I see that the plum, in a way, the, the connection with the plum and the tree that it, it is connected to, there's some kind of exhaustion in their exchanges. Almost like the tree is ready for the plum to feel complete, to um, either it will be ready to be picked or it will fall from the tree. Because the tree cannot hold the plum any longer. I see the tree is complete with its relationship in the growth of this plum and that it is time for the plum to be let go of. It's almost like a strange itchy sensation starts to happen and the tree just knows it needs to let go of the plum. And the plum is also very tired and heavy and it's ready to move on from the tree. And 
it's kind of strange because time takes longer than anybody thought. And the plum still clings to the tree. The tree still holds the plum. And there's something becoming out of balance with their relationship. Why do they cling to each other when they don't... They aren't really helping each other anymore. The tree does not help the plum and the plum is not helping the tree. But yet they cannot let go of one another. In a way, the plum wants to start over again, but it can't because once it is gone from the tree, um, that, that will be the next um, aspect of its life. And it's over. That's when it is over. And it feels like it's up to the plum to make the decision. It, because I feel the tree has been giving this plum time and the tree does not agree with cruelty when the plum is not ready to let go yet emotionally. Even if it is physically ready, it is not emotionally ready. And so the tree accepts the relationship for longer than really is healthy for both of them. The plum now is ashamed. Like, why did I do this to you, the, the one who brought life to me, the one that created and, and breathed life into my being and, and let me grow and let me have this experience? I still cannot let go of you. The tree says, and then it is time now for me to let go of you. And instantaneously, I hear there's like a little, um, I guess, like... Um, branch like a twig breaking sound very faint okay very pale like very li limited but then i hear that tiny little sound and then the the plum drops to the ground and immediately is bruised and the plum cries and says this hurt i i have fallen now to my death And the tree must completely let go of the plum so it does not communicate with the plum any longer. And the plum now must learn a new relationship with life. And the life is now um, a relationship with the earth and the ground. And also the plum has the ability to nurture animals that are able to eat its fruit here. I don't see any animals ever come. I see it starts to rain though, and the plum is crying, and it says it is going to die, and it doesn't like the idea, it seems like dying is a dark thing, it is a thing that you have to do blind and you don't know where it's going to take you, you don't know what it means, you don't know anything about it, and you don't like it at all. You don't have any tools to even conceive of it. You want nothing to do with it. I see um, there's lightning and there's a flash of like a grim reaper or a dark um, being here. And he's smiling and it reminds me of this aggressor like um, is here to challenge you. So is that death? Only if you're afraid of death. Because if you're not afraid of death, then death will look angelic. It will look nurturing and loving like a, a hand outstretched welcoming you home. So what would ever create the resistance? It's the fear of the unknown. I see a very long time actually passes. Even, it's like this has gone into fall and winter and spring somehow. Like, I, it just seems like um, the plum is still alive. The plum's still there on the ground. Like, it hasn't rotten away. It hasn't been eaten. It's like, had a very long and extended life <laughs> experience here. And I'm impressed. And I see the plum is, has a new sense of itself. And what the plum is capable of is not whatever, what anyone thought. 
The plum is not just your average plum, okay? I see the plum learns how to sit upright and it learns how to roll in order to get from one place to the next. <laughs> Who would have thought a plum could do so much? I see the plum is taking hold of its own um, possibilities. And it's not about life or death. It's about, um, I guess it, it's, it is about life. It's not about like, I guess, um, a spirit realm that is, um, because I see that the plum isn't afraid of those concepts but yet is alive and thriving. Um, and it's inspiring of itself. Like it inspires itself and follows through with its inspirations and is living an inspiring life as well. I see that this plum somehow finds a way to get a little car and it's in the little car and it is driving away from the tree. It still kind of has hard feelings towards the tree. I'm not sure why it has to have hard feelings toward the tree. It's like... Yeah, you let me go. You know, I'm going to find my own way. I'll never forget what you did to me, tree. <laughs> but I'm going to find my own way. I still don't, you know, I still don't forgive you for that. <laughs> it's like, okay. The plum still does not forgive the tree, I guess, for letting it go. <laughs> but look at all the plum accomplished because the tree had the courage to let the plum go. The tree wouldn't be appreciated by the plum for its courage to let it go. The plum holds a grudge, but look at what the plum accomplishes all by itself. It didn't need the tree anymore. It actually needed to be on its own and to find its own path and see what it was capable of and to not hold a grudge on anything that's ever happened in the past. Because look at you go. Look at you go. And somehow you and this plum, um, I guess you, you share some common um, themes together. Because I, I see you've conquered a lot and it's really worth it to acknowledge that. So it's worth it to acknowledge all that you have accomplished in your life. And it's like sometimes we, f we can feel let down by people um, who actually gave us um, everything that we needed in those lessons that we shared. And maybe we didn't like the, uh, the way that it, the exchanges happened or the, the turning of the events. Didn't necessarily agree with it, but... When we can understand the courage of other people and what it takes for other people to make decisions that might impact our life, um, I don't know, it's like, it's all water under the bridge kind of thing. It's, it's okay. It's all okay. And because of the way things happen, you become a representation of your strongest self because you're counting on you. You're, you're finding yourself in this process and you're seeing the strength and um, the capability of you, right? Pretty neat to watch this. You're a very inspiring plum. <laughs> That's kind of cool, huh? Okay. Okay, so why did your angel want to, want to share this story? This is meant to heal your stomach as well. This is meant to me walk into your stomach and see it in a new creative story-like way. What is the importance of this story for your stomach? <sighs> Again, it, it has to do with identity and how you are working through, um, I guess, what, li what happens in life. And that also gives your stomach um, nourishment. And it's, it's silkier, smoother, more relaxed. Everything is so peaceful and quiet right now. It's so nice right now. I don't... The... the experience that I'm having right now is just it's like a, a true winding down of oneself a true moment of just nothingness you could say 
I'm not in the plum story. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not anywhere particular. I'm just in a place of peaceful silence. I don't see the aggressor, the, I don't see this jab or gesture here. I do still see remnants of the pollution, but it's a silver cord and you're on equal terms and you don't hate it. It's almost like you understand it. And this is your life experience. It's just simply a tool. But you're the, you're the missing link for yourself. You could say you're the courage, you're the strength, you're the um, champion, really. Let's go back to the inside of the stomach and see what it's like now. Yeah, it's definitely not as nowhere near as drippy. It also doesn't look like it has little chunks or gashes or anything inside. It just, it does look dry, so it looks a lot cleaner. What you need is, I feel like I, I'm trying to plant some seeds and grow some, um, I guess, an environment in here. And I'm not any kind of medical doctor, but I get the thought about, um, you know how they talk about like probiotics, like to add um, good, healthy um, flora and fauna <laughs> to your digestive system? Um, because those that ecosystem helps your digestion, right? And I want to build an ecosystem here. And it seems like it's hard for things to grow for some reason. And I want to encourage growth in here. Healthy growth. Hmm. All I'm doing right now is I'm looking and I'm thinking of the idea and I'm spreading the idea around as though it is the seeds that um, grow the garden. So I'm continuing to, with uh, persistence, <laughs> um, introduce the idea. Weird. Um, there's animals in here, small, like, there's like... Um, it makes you think of swamp animals, like frogs and um, snails and not like alligators. It's just like maybe dragonflies and, um, you know, insects that live near like a little, little backyard pond or something. I don't see any snakes. Um, I, guess, I guess you could say um, little bugs and uh, bugs uh, like earthworms, like um, bugs from the ground. I guess we could say gnats and mosquitoes, bugs we don't necessarily like, but I see that, that having a balanced ecosystem, it, it's okay um, that it includes everything that creates the gift of that. We aren't judging any of this stuff. And I see there's happiness in the creation of a natural ecosystem without judgment of, its, of the ecosystem. And it's just cool, creating some emotional response about it. Like being thankful to even have some, um, you know, toads and things like this and dragonflies and... And it's soil. It's, it's the soil that's important. It's the beginning of something it's what's happening here and I see that there's the buildup of like a type of mud and it's really healthy in the energy world okay and as the mud starts to grow and develop I see that it's really dry and scaly and there's um release of what looks like steam or pressure and we're okay with that. We're going to work with that. And, the, and we'll let the mud continue to grow and develop. And it's getting oily now. It looks like oily mud. 
And we're talking about like facial oils, like it's kind of um, golden uh, and, and uh, velvety kind of baby oil type feel to it um, on top of like a mud. This is really nice for your stomach to have this. It's like a protective layer. There's another release like um, it, where it felt dry. There's like little black threads that are coming out. Like black squiggly lines is coming out of what, what are like the pores in the stomach is kind of what it's like. And they're melting into the mud and the this oily substance. And the mud is using it as like a product or it's going to help uh, build up the mud even more. <sighs> it's recycling it. Now there's even, there's lo like urchin looking things coming out, spiky looking things. These are painful. These are really, really painful. <sighs> And when these uh, come out, they just collect in the mud and the mud um, like neutralizes the sharp points and they start to break down and just become little like bits of sand. And that breaks down and becomes more of the mud substance. And the mud is now hardening and it's becoming a new layer of like the flesh of the stomach. And there's this, uh, that pollution or that aggressive energy as well as like, um, does not like it when you find a way to heal yourself. But guess what? This is your life, not its life. So um, it's like, sure, don't like it. Like you can, it's, it's almost like you're, <laughs> you ever have a sore loser and you're like totally the winner and then there's the sore loser and the sore losers are like pouting because you're figuring out how to like conquer this thing. And then the sore loser are like, how dare you heal your own stomach? You're not supposed to do that. That's not how this works. It's like, I can do what I want. You know, this is my life. And so it, it's like the pollution doesn't like that. But, it, but I remind the pollution that like, this is the silver core. Like we're on even ground here. You, you're teaching me what you need to teach me and I'm learning what I need to learn. Um, so if you want to pout in the corner, you can, but um, I'm, I'm really proud of me. I'm really proud of me. <sighs> Again, another level of just relaxing, 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 relaxing. <sighs> and don't be like, I, I'm, I'm called to remind you that, that if you were to close your eyes and experience that the world isn't just you and everything that you see, feel, experience in the human world, but, but there are beings that, that live in the folds of the, I guess you could just call it the air, and that are, you could call them invisible, but you could sense them. You can tell that kindness and love and support is surrounding you and if you could have even more a step of courage and this one you could say is very easy because it's not um working with conflict unless it it is and what is the conflict then but it's it's only in saying um, i welcome my angels to help me and i believe that my angels are here and now i'm choosing to see that you are helping me because i'm allowing you to help me now and I welcome you to help me with the struggles that I'm having with my stomach and um, struggles that I'm having with anything else, right? And to continue to work on seeing what you're capable of here in the situation, help bring in the fresh air, help bring in um, the strength to keep going and the ability to relax and to breathe and to feel safe in this process and to remember that this isn't trying to, this could be breaking you down, but no, you, you are only getting stronger. This is only, um, you're only gaining from this. 
You're gaining so much from this. <sighs> All right. <sighs> thank you very, very much. I'm glad I could help you out. Um, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. And <sighs> I hope you all have a very beautiful day. Bye for now.